uh, that we're in another case of what appears to be the setting up of a of a dualism or a, a, a duality between a Western world and an Islamic world. And again, I'm pretty confident the powers that be are going to find ways to uh, make a buck off both sides, as they did in the last big duality, which was uh, communism versus free enterprise. How's that for a big one to wrap your head around? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, George. Um, thanks, really thanks for that. Um, many of the roundtable and forum members are subscribers of Peopleomics and are really long-time readers of Cliff. So um, a lot of areas and topics you touched there we're definitely going to get into. Um, the next question we had was from Chuck. Hello, George. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? Doing fine, doing fine. I've got a question. Um, my, most of my questions are, are centered around markets since they seem to be the topic of conversation. i got a question. Do you believe that the markets are fixed and manipulated to prop them up as an indicated by the, the hidden plunge protection team stoppages and purchases, which I'm sure you're aware of? Also, also, do you have plans to cash out when you deem the market has become too volatile? Yeah, uh, I guess I need to take that as a couple of different pieces. Uh, the first piece has to do with, are the markets manipulated? The, the, the answer there is, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> and, and let me explain. Uh, at the absolute grandest level, one could argue the markets are not manipulated. Uh, the markets are not manipulated because... At some level, there is still an auction process that sets the price of securities. However, when you move into the next layer of the onion, of course the markets are manipulated by the big position players uh, on the one hand, as well as the interested parties on the other. Uh, the interested parties being those institutions that used to be the made a market in this security guys. So one could say when you when you get into that next layer, now yeah there is some manipulation uh, of price that occurs, but moving in another layer, uh, R. N. Elliott uh, of the Elliott Wave uh, correctly noted that markets seem to move in fairly regular advances and declines, uh, which are either impulsive or uh, corrective in nature and that these are somewhat predictable. Uh, there are only a handful of impulsive moves uh, which a student of the market needs to study. But as Robin, my friend Robin Landry, uh, who's a, a first-rate technical uh, analyst using Elliott notes, uh, it's those 13 different corrective patterns and knowing how they tip their hand that can take a person, in, in Robin's case, 37 years of study to try and figure out. Uh, so at that layer, uh, the markets may or may not be manipulated, depending on if you understand how wave theory works. Uh, Bob Prechter's uh, website, ElliottWave.com, uh, is an excellent resource. And, and I've got huge respect for Bob because of uh, the numerous books he set up, as well as his uh, Socionomics Foundation, Socionomics.com. Uh, and he gets into the application of Elliott Wave Theory, uh, not just in the markets, but also on the broader uh, socioeconomic spectrum. Uh, but then uh, we get back to, yes, then what about all those trading houses that bought the online brokerage firms and installed between the online brokerage and the otherwise auction market? Uh, what about the guys that installed a layer of trade ahead of you ultra fast computers, uh, which are, are the high frequency trading platforms. Now the high frequency trading platforms arguably are taking everybody, <clears throat> not uh, to the cleaners, but they're hurting all the market participants a fraction of penny at, uh, at a time. Uh, and so in that sense, yes, that part of the market may be rigged. But stepping back from that, the independent day trader like myself uh, can use a series of charts in Elliott and sort of see where things are going and just understand that you won't get entirely uh, 
a, uh, a free market price. There may be, oh, perhaps a fraction of a penny a share that's built into it for the high-frequency traders who are going to front-run markets. So now we're back at, no, it's not really, because I can play the market. But now going back to, yes, it is manipulated, yes, it is, because both Alan Greenspan as well as Ben the Bernanke have caused me a lot of personal loss in my trading account by intervening at the market uh, without saying, well, well in advance when they're going to intervene. <laughs> and so, yes, QE2 hurt me uh, as much as QE1 hurt me. And then there were the Bernanke, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Greenspan uh, intervention movements with rates and policies, which were also not extremely well telegraphed the day in advance. So, yes, at that level, the markets are manipulated. Uh, now, let, let me pause at this layer. I mean, we've got several layers inside of the onion. Uh, but at this layer, it's important to note that the Federal Reserve has is neither, fed, neither federal nor does it have any reserves. Uh, what it does is it orders paper from the mint uh, with a bunch of zeros on it, ones and zeros, and they seem to be happy with the occasional fives, twos, and so forth. So uh, the reason that the Fed does what it does is that the Fed's job is to maintain economic stability. Now, uh, imagine we're all on the Titanic, and we've hit the iceberg as we started hitting the iceberg in uh, the fall of 2001, uh, which very obviously to any long-term market student, was the all-time high of the Dow with the asterisk on an inflation-adjusted basis. Uh, in other words, yes, the Dow went up to 14,000 and change in 2007. But if you correct that 14,000-odd high for inflation, it really undershot where the inflation-corrected market was uh, by that period, it, it should have been over 15,000 to be a new high, uh, but it was not. It was simply a, uh, a very large Elliott wave one down, and the housing bubble, as well as the multiple wars that were triggered, uh, constituted wave two uh, up in a long wave economic perspective. Uh, and now we have seen... Uh, uh, wave three down began when we started falling apart. You'll remember Cliff's predictions about October 2008 with the market finally bottoming uh, on an inflation-adjusted basis in April of 2009. Yep, we did. And, and so, so what we saw there was <clears throat> we, we, we saw the beginning of a little bounce that we're in right now which, by my work, may very well have topped out uh, at the 12,400 kind of range. We just completed wave one down, a little wave one down, and we're now doing a little corrective move, which appears, and this is, and I'm not giving financial advice, but it appears to have completed uh, what would be this, this little... Uh, beginning of the bigger move down uh, last, let's see, Thursday. And so Thursday I went short uh, using an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, uh, expecting that between now and when Cliff's predicted uh, tension build begins around March 23, that we could have a very rapid decline of the market down to the 11,750 layer. Uh, what I then expect would be... Uh, a move back up of the market to sometime in uh, April, and then a major move down uh, beginning around the 1st of May, maybe a week or so either side, and, and then uh, a major move down, which could go as low as the 2009 low of Dow 6,600. And, and that would occur with the latest edition of Summer of Hell, uh, the currency problems, the scarcity of oil, the famine, the food failures, 
and the and the general progress of global rent. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> now at that point, uh, we, where we stopped as we went further into the onion was yes, that's rigged. There's an interesting philosophical question that we need to address. Uh, the, the the philosophical question is if you were uh, a powers that be member, uh, you can write all kinds of conspiratorial scripts about the Bohemian Groves and the Davos and the World Economic uh, Forum and all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, the philosophical question is, is it right for the Federal Reserve to inject large amounts of liquidity uh, in order to stave off a greater economic depression which could bring down the entire world. I don't think I need to uh, go into too much discussion of what the uh, Herstadt uh, principle is, but in 1974, the world had a near brush with the financial end of life on Earth when a little bank in uh, uh, Europe, uh, Herstadt Bank, of, it was either Austria or Germany, <laughs> Bankhaus Herstadt uh, was involved in derivatives, and derivatives right now are a $234 trillion floating crapshoot that can literally bankrupt the entire world. Uh, back then it was only, you know, less than a trillion dollars, but it still would have ended financial life on Earth. Uh, I think it's actually, so, I think it's probably over one quadrillion, I believe. Uh, the Office of the Comptroller of Currency Numbers, the one I use, which is $234 trillion, uh, and, and, and now that's on the U.S. That's the U.S. book. So it's it's very possibly a quadrillion when you get other countries' uh, money, you know, China, Russia, and so forth. So I, I don't doubt the number. Uh, but but my point is that philosophically, if you could print money and postpone that day of wreck, would that be the right thing to do? And then <laughs> we already know how the Fed's answered that. The Fed, as yes. well as Congress, has answered, "Oh hell yes, it's the right thing to do because if we don't do that, we're going to be in, uh, we're going to see global rev in America, which could change out our system of government, which the powers that be find very useful because it allows for a certain uh, bid auction process on a legislative basis, and the powers that be work that just, you know, like it's a finely tuned instrument. Uh, if anything, Cliff's work has made me." as if it were possible, even more cynical about economics uh, than I was previously. Okay. Um, George, just a quick follow-up. Um, yeah, let, me, let me just explain that, that I don't mean this to be a, a long and uh, uh, drawn-out description, but, but when you ask the question about uh, manipulation and control, uh, it's there's there's a symbiotic death dance kind of thing here, and as long as as the system can be propped up, uh, it's obviously in the interests of the powers that be uh, to keep it propped up as long as they can, because if it goes down, the whole world gets reset to something probably akin to oh gosh, 1920.